On today's episode of Cedar Springs TV Live, we'll be taking a deep dive into the $64 million bond to help rebuild our school. Then we will be looking at world events and what's currently going on in our world. We interview Brielle Tay and Miss Johnson on their trip to France through our French program here at Cedar Springs. As well as interview from senior athlete Carly Dreyer as she tells us her experiences through high school athletics. All this and more on Cedar Springs TV Live. Welcome back, I'm Sophia Alvarez. And I'm Eva Andersma, and welcome to another edition of Cedar Springs TV Live. I constantly, I personally feel that the constant construction can be distracting throughout the day. How about you? Yes, but I think it's very important to improve the structure of our school. I definitely agree. We had Junior and Corbin Newberg ask teachers about what's going in, on inside the construction. I'm Corbin Newberg, and this is... Bruce Junior. And this is Hard News, where we're going to be interviewing some of our teachers and what they think about the construction. Uh, for me, there's lots of distractions outside. Um, students uh, get distracted with the equipment going back and forth, so it definitely takes away from um, instruction time. It's been difficult this year with the noise and the, especially with the roof uh, going on and the noise that's caused by this. But you know, uh, it's all it all needs to be done, and yeah, everybody's got to work around it. A big part of the construction is just improving um, and making more room for students. Uh, that would be the biggest thing. Um, class sizes are pretty packed, so yeah, it would improve life. Uh, I know they're doing it in phases. The bigger portion, though, should be ready to go before the school year starts, uh, so that's exciting. Um, I know they've got uh, other phases that they're going to do, but I think it's you know going to be into next year before everything gets wrapped up. I think the finances that the school has put towards construction is uh, well thought out. I think uh, it just takes some time um, and resources as to where that money needs to be spent is sometimes, uh, you know, always a topic of discussion. Um, and obviously, uh, education uh, comes first, and that's why the academic wings were um, uh, being built first. No, I, you know, I'm, I'm proud of our community for uh, passing the, the millage to do this and, and in order to keep uh, Cedar Springs the way it should be, uh, our community stepped up and, and approved that. Well, when I was taking my SAT, they were very loud and they didn't stop for like at least an hour into my SAT and it was very distracting. This school is very tiny and with like more students coming in, the hallways are just going to get more crowded so we need the extra space. This is Corbin Newberg and Morris Jr. signing off. Man, that construction just really gets you going. For sure. What these guys are doing is really crazy. Don't you agree? A hundred percent. It's nice to have people working hard to improve our school environment. When we come back, we'll be looking at some world events. Hashtag YOLO. For me, I think engagement begins with building relationships with students, building some trust. Uh, some students you can build trust pretty quickly in the first week or two of school, and some students you find it takes really an entire year of building or repeating and sort of trusting them to come out of their shells when they are ready to do so. Yeah, I, I again, I noticed that it takes time for some students. When students do come out of their shell and begin to share opinions, I'm almost always surprised, you know, I, you think you know students, but uh, it takes a long time, sometimes a whole year, to really see who they are. And as they begin to share things about themselves, I think the entire class becomes more empathic. Even with rising worldwide tensions, United States students' lives remain untouched. Liz Giuliano and Kate Johnson will be giving us a better look at what's going on in our world. 
On Thursday, February 24th of this year, Russia's Prime Minister Vladimir Putin sent troops to invade the country of Ukraine. Putin's reason for overrunning its sister country is, quote, to denazify Ukraine and to ensure Ukraine's neutral status. Russia's claims of atrocity in Ukraine remains the focal point as to its reason for invasion. The conflict has gone beyond just between President Zelensky and Prime Minister Putin. Now it also affects millions of civilians in Ukraine. I think the war in Ukraine could affect students all over the place uh, throughout the United States. Really to, um, to get them aware of geopolitics a little bit more, get them maybe a bit more engaged with the fact that, you know, when we, when we talk in our history classes or in our current events about these countries and their leaders and the types of things that they're doing, um, the very, very real uh, tragic consequences can come with some of these topics that seem so far away. That's probably the most likely effect on students. Another one I think is some may be drawn into perhaps careers that they wouldn't have considered otherwise. Things in uh, politics or journalism, um, those are ways to have a direct impact on what's happening in Ukraine. Yeah, yeah this, this, this is the largest conflict in Europe since 1945, since uh, World War II ended. So I, I absolutely, you're, you're already seeing European politicians do pretty drastic things, things that six months ago would have been unthinkable. Things like um, increased military spending in Germany. Um, Finland just in the last 24 hours has said that they're gonna apply to be in NATO. Um, this, this relatively small country, small military has not only stood their ground, but is actually pushing Rus Russian forces back. And Putin's always styled himself as kind of a strong man. Um, so can a strong man politician hold on to his power when like Russian billionaires are losing their yachts around the world and things like that? I, I don't know. And that would be a big change. Uh, because that would be a major difference that could come out of the war and I think is likely. As of right now, there are still at least 100 Ukrainian civilians held up inside of Marupil's steel plant, while Moscow continues its war efforts on the eastern side of the country. The U.S. House of Representatives is considering adding an additional $40 billion supplemental fund to help out with the war effort. However, President Biden agrees that we may run out of funds to give. While civilian structures, hospitals, and schools, all residing in within Ukraine, still stand at varying states of havoc. Elizabeth and Katie definitely gave us a good insight to what's happening in the world today. This year has provided many struggles, but also many opportunities. Now we will hand it off to Aiden Glass at the Sports Desk. Hi, I'm Aiden here at the Sports Desk. Our spring athletes had some phenomenal games this week. Baseball had a few doubleheaders and so did softball. On Tuesday, baseball beat Wayland 10 to 4, and then they lost 2 to 10. On Thursday, they beat Wayland 8 to 5, and then on Saturday, they lost to Traverse City 1 to 9, and then they beat them 8 to 4. Softball on Tuesday, they lost to Wayland 0 to 15, and then also lost to them again 1 to 7. And then on Thursday, they beat Forest Hill Central 13 to 1 and 12 to 1. And then on Saturday, they had a tournament at Tri-County. They beat Morley Stanwood 21-2, and then they beat Saranac 7-1, and then they ended up losing the championship game at Evart 0-10. Uh, soccer on Wednesday beat Northview 3-1, and then they tied to Rockford on Saturday 0-0. Track had to meet on Friday, and then girls tennis on Wednesday beat Greenville 7-1, and then they also play on Saturday. We will now be taking a closer look at one of our tennis players, Carly Dreyer. Um, I'm Carly. I'm a senior. <laughs> um, that's about it. <laughs> I play tennis. I play tennis. <laughs> Um, I started in middle school and kind of hated it, but I decided to try it one more year, and then I ended up liking it, so I'm just stuck with it. <laughs> um, it's kind of sad, but like tennis is one of those sports where you can kind of play yeah. like forever, so I mean, I'm okay with it. 
I guess. I, I mean, it's sad, but whatever. <laughs> I've played some like really long games, and it was really fun doing that. Um, and I've, I don't know, I've had a lot of partners throughout the year that have been really fun to play with, so just that, I guess. I'm in EMC, so I can't go like directly to a four-year yeah. college with the sport. But I was thinking about maybe trying out for tennis at a future college. I'll have to just see if they even offer it. And, um, I'd just say if you're interested in something, you should just try it and see if it works. And maybe multiple times, <laughs> just in case. Um, yeah, yeah, thank you. Hi, I'm Adam back at the sports desk. So, some upcoming events we have this week. Uh, Monday, we have baseball, softball, soccer, and tennis. And then Tuesday is baseball and softball again, and then boys golf. Thank you for listening to the sports desk. I will now send it off to Eva and Sophia after the break. Welcome back. Now we would like to hand it off to Kylie Roseberry and Gracie Shreen, who interviewed students on their trip to France through our French program here at Cedar Springs High School. We spent a lot of time in the classroom talking about France and the culture, and it's pretty far away, so it was a great experience for the students to be able to see what we learn in the books and talk about in real life and just understand the difference between the French culture and our culture. The cost for the whole week with um, what the students had to pay in order to go was about $3,500 and that included everything but their souvenirs and their tips. Most students spent probably about $300 I would say on souvenirs just because they wanted to get things for a lot of people back home. Is France a lot different from the U.S.? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well when we first went there there was like graffiti on everything. And I thought that that was kind of unique just because like they didn't take it down they just kind of left it up even in their like towns like they're so like close together and different and they wouldn't have like a McDonald's or like a Taco Bell they had like cafes and like names of places that like you wouldn't know in the US I like seeing the Eiffel Tower sparkle at night and I'd like to see the south of France just because I heard that it was a lot more colorful than the northern part of France just being in a different culture because it was exciting and new and I wasn't used to it and the food was good. <laughs> All right, now back to Eva and Sophia. Thank you, Kylene and Gracie. It's better. It's nice to have a better look at the trip to France. And a big thank you to Miss Johnson for facilitating this trip. Now we will hand it off to Ella Phelps who will be doing a breakdown of our weather. Hi, I'm Ella Phelps from Cedar Springs TV Weather and we take a look at the average temperatures today. We've got mid, lower 50s, and a little colder in the north. And now we take a look at the seven day weather forecast. And it starts off a little chilly, but gets warmer in the middle of the week, and we see some sunshine. So enjoy your sunny week. Thank you, Ella, for the weather breakdown. This summer is going to be a hot one. Absolutely. Definitely want to catch some rays this week and the rest of the summer. We hope you enjoy your summer and we'll see you again in the fall. And thanks again for joining us on Cedar Springs TV Live. I'm Sophia Alvarez. And I'm Eva Andersma. It's a good day to be a Red Hawk. <laughs>